This is going to be a simple build around the radial motor which is arguably the most powerful source of producing electricity that electrical edge has. And this time we are using 20 generators on a single motor and when they are all saturated it's going to give us over 230,000 HE per second uh, when converted to NTM power. There are timestamps in the description for specific sections. So yeah, without any further ado my guys, let's get straight into this video. Let's start with the foundation. You will only need two chunks of space in order to make this entire build. It's not a very big build. And the only changes I have made to the configs this time around is for the cable power factor. I have bumped it up all the way to 10 from 1. This will allow us to carry 150 kilowatt on our very high voltage cable. Is this overpowered? Yes, but I will balance this later on. Also, another change you will notice is that the maximum radiance per second has been dialed down to 250 from 1000 radiance per second, which was the maximum value before. With that out of the way, we come up one from the ground and place down the radial motor. This is the only way to place it. Also, a signal cable will be coming in here later on, so we need that block. Now, coming one front from the radial motor, we make some foundation in order to place down 20 generators. So, place down five of them connected like this and making four rows or columns of this will give us a total of 20 generators. Now, in order to connect them to the radial motor, we place down some joint hubs and some normal joints in the middle and two joints connecting to the radial motor should do the trick. Removing the block here cause cables are gonna go from there. We are gonna do the same thing in the front, place down four joint hubs and in the middle, actually joints, removing block from beneath them is going to convert them into clean looking shafts like this. Now we place down one joint hub in the middle and this is going to go into the tachometer which is going to measure the speed of our entire shaft network. From the tachometer we are going to make a 5x7 foundation and this 5x7 foundation is going to have our flywheel bank. So in total we are gonna have 25 flywheels placed in a 5x5 formation with joints hub on the front and on the back. So this way they are all connected and it will act as the stabilizer for our entire build basically. Now from the flywheels we come out by one, place a clutch and this clutch will be connected to a fixed shaft. Also make sure to have the plate and the clutch pin in that and the fixed shaft in order to burn some excess energy. I'll uh, basically show you this later on when we turn off this pin. Now time for some cabling. We connect the very high voltage cable and make sure it is the very high voltage cable. The other cables won't be able to handle all of that power and voltage and connect them going around the entire build like this. Making sure that there are no breaks in the middle. It should be one continuous joint. And in this way, we are going to connect all 20 of these generators. Now with that connection done, uh, also a neat thing by the way, if you press C and then uh, with any block in your hand, you press on a cable. It will cover that cable with that block. However, this is only visual cause if you break this block, then the cables are beneath it. The connections are there. They are not broken. Anyways, we place down an electrical probe in the middle. This is where our power output is going to be and right clicking it with a very high voltage cable will connect it to the entire generator line. We are going to measure power on the top is going to be 83,000 watts and on the bottom is 84,000 watts. What this means is that until power level hits 83 kilowatts, the generator is going to take in the maximum fuel it can and it will start decreasing as soon as the number goes above it. You can see the connection of the signal cable and in order to get a master control to basically turn off this whole build, I'm going to place down a signal relay with a switch. So what this will do is even though there is signal coming in right now, that signal will only go through if the signal relay is on. If it is off, then yeah, the signal won't go in. So this is basically our master switch for the entire build. Without this, our, the radial motor is not going to take in any fuel. Now this is optional, but I like to have a bypass here. So placing down a hub, and this hub will basically let the signal cable pass through, and the very high voltage cable will come out perpendicularly. And this is our second output, the bypass output, I will tell you why just in a bit. So yeah, with that place then we have a bypass for our power. And now uh, we are going to place down 
a very high voltage relay. Now this relay will be controlled using the tachometer. Basically it will monitor the speed. The tachometer will monitor the speed and based on that speed we are going to pull power. Now this is because we don't want to start pulling power as soon as uh, the generator or the radial motor starts running. So the tachometer is set to 2, 10 and 190. What this means is below 190 radians per second we are not going to pull any power from the entire build. As soon as that number hits above 190 we will start pulling power. Now placing down an exporter with an RF to HE converter and a storage block and that's it that's our energy storage set and for the bypass place down a second uh, voltage relay the very high voltage relay and connect it to a switch and make sure that the switch is off so that the relay is in open condition. So right now it's closed we have a bypass but make sure that the switch is off basically so that the relay is in open condition. For the exporter set the resistance value to 150 ohms and uh, yeah that's going to be optimal for the amount of power that we are going to pull which is roughly 70 kilowatt. So that's the resistance set and also uh, the clutch it does need a switch. Finally we are going to connect fuel this is going to be the build craft fuel and supplying it the radial motor with it the motor will try to start but it can't cause it doesn't have any signal right now now making sure that the connections are open like this to 10 190 on the tachometer and the clutch is disengaged we now start the system so as you can see a slow start and the radians per second they will start to go up now this process is going to take some time because we have quite a lot of flywheels on our system here but I want you to take a close look at the contact of the relay because as soon as the radians per second they hit uh, the 200 mark or 205 mark the contact is going to connect yeah right now so I hope you caught that as soon as the contact start touching we will start pulling power from the system and this number is going to go up gradually it will saturate at around 232.69 so while that's happening i am going to build a fence around my entire base in order to keep the pesky villagers out as we have a village right behind us anyways with the the build nearly at the saturation point we have 232.56 thousand hg per second which is pretty good power production and uh, yeah this number will remain constant basically this entire build will keep running till you supply it with fuel now if i turn this off then the radial motor will slowly lose energy as you can see the energy number is going down and so will the generators now as the radian per second they hit below 190 then we'll stop pulling power from the system now when this happens uh basically due to so many flywheels in our system we are going to have a lot of leftover energy so as you can see 2.78 megajoules of energy in every single component every flywheel every generator has a lot of energy in it so you can either burn this energy off by basically connecting the clutch to the fixed shaft it will be converted to heat energy or what you can do is now open up the bypass now what this will do is no matter at what speed the shafts are spinning we will pull power from the generators and this will slow them down and drain their energy so this is a good way to basically not waste energy that is going to be there due to the inertial force and now i'll show you what happens if you engage the clutch this will very rapidly basically take care of all of the residual energy the number will go down and our entire system will come to an halt. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that's how the turning off mechanism is going to work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, you found it helpful. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions regarding the build, leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out and stay safe.